My brother also dropped out of school to help me here. The work conditions in Yemen have prevented us from completing our studies. We have to work to survive. We hope to go back. Well, let's go to Amman in Jordan and speak to Amjad Yamin. He's the spokesperson for Save the Children Yemen. Thank you so much for coming on to the program. Now, just listening to that report, it's a really desperate situation facing the children in Yemen, and it has been for such a long time now. Uh, just talk us through what life is like for children in Yemen right now. Thank you for that. Sadly, the situation has not gotten any better in the last few years. It's the opposite. It's getting more desperate and more dire for children. Yemen continues to be one of the worst, if not the worst, humanitarian crises in the world. And the children continue to suffer the brunt of that conflict. As you saw from the report, about 12 million children today in Yemen, that is more than 40 percent of the population of the country, are in need of humanitarian assistance. And they rely on it on a daily basis just to survive. Our team just last week, and this is sadly by no means a story that we only hear once, have met the family of Ahmed, who themselves don't feed the children breakfast, for example, just because they rely on them getting the school feeding program, because simply they just cannot afford to feed them. Children go to school every day. They have to cross areas that are uninhabited by people. They have to cross areas in close proximity to, to conflict and shelling. And this is the reality for every day for children. The same Ahmed who told us every day he sends his children to school, he has to think of the idea that they may never return because of the conflict in Yemen. And this is sadly something that families in Yemen today have to think about every day. Will my children return from school? If I stop them from going to education, what is their future going to be like? And this should not be a situation families are left in anywhere in the world. Will my children return from school? That's, that's a question that it must be so difficult for any parent to, 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 even, to even think of. And of course, there's been a lot of uh, support from the international community for Yemen. But is it enough? Sadly, it's not. And the level of crisis that we see in Yemen today is so huge that a lot more is needed. So if, if I have to think of at least three things that are urgently needed now in Yemen. We definitely urgently need more funding to be able to maintain uh, even the, the least amount of humanitarian operation that we can that, to allow the families to survive. But then also the economy in the country needs urgent support. If we keep only providing relief operations, sadly, we'll be here another few years from today where we are in the same situation because we do need to address the root causes of the vulnerability of people. Which takes me to the third point that also, without a cessation of hostilities, without engaging all the parties in Yemen for peace, making sure that these children can grow up in a situation where they feel safe, where they can go to school safely, sadly, we're going to see, continue to see children suffer the brunt of the conflict. Amjad, when we look at eight years of the war in Yemen, how does this affect future generations of children in that country? This is actually a deep concern for us, particularly as the conflict goes on. Larger thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of children lose out on education. What does that mean for the future of the country? And sadly, I cannot tell you that uh, I cannot tell you what it's going to look like now. But unless the conflict ends, we are going to see millions of children who are, have no future without education, without prospect of be, being able to rebuild their countries. and. That will, will mean a Yemen where you have a large number of population will continue to need support, will continue to need help, will need to catch up to be able to return to education. And that would not mean a country that can thrive, that can survive from the conflict, that can recover from the impact of seven years of also destruction to the infrastructure. Today, we're not just talking about returning children to school. We're also talking about mm -hmm. the fact that there aren't enough schools to host all of these children. So unless we can rebuild some of this, the children are the ones who will see the worst end of this crisis in the future. Amjad Yemin, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. Uh, a really sad and dire situation for children and so many other people in Yemen. Thank you.